hear me little Jackie, no I've smoked me bucky, have a bit of cracky, till the boat comes in. Dance to the daddy, sing to the mummy, dance to the daddy, to the mummy, sing. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy, thou shalt have the fishy when the boat comes in. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy, thou shalt have the fishy when the boat comes in. Morning, Lady Caroline. Hope it keeps like this for the show. Oh, I can only go down on one's knees and pray. Wish I save you delivering those. Thanks. There's not much. No parcels. And uh, how's his grace? Oh, in fine form. Hoping to take the Bedlington Rose Prize this year. Why, well, he doesn't stand a chance. You can tell him. Except maybe for his walls of simple florins. They're not bad. You might get an honourable mention. That's most encouraging of you. I'll tell him. Good morning, Lady Caroline. Yet. I said we're not open yet. Mrs. Ford, you me. Will you let in, Mrs. Ford? I'm not open yet. It's just for a bit cheese. Come here, and then. What have the rest of the street trips in after you? I have no to give them. It's for me man. I was making up his bait. I thought I had some, but it had gone off. Ooh, you could have gone fishing with it. What sort of cheese do you want? Oh, any will do to fill him. The red. Just half a pound. And uh, maybe a slice of bacon for his tea and all. And I'll take a pound of sugar while I'm here. Oh, you've had a postcard. That's London, isn't it? Is it from your man? He's not my man. You know as well as I do. Oh, I do and all. Oh, Hinny, it's hard to be on your own at a time like this. I'll take a packet of tea as well. I know how it was with me, but that was the war. It was different. Is these fresh eggs? I'll take half a dozen of that. I know how you must be feeling. It's a time when a woman needs to have a man about the house. Not but what I say, you're well rid of bad rubbish. What sort of a man is it that would leave a lass with a bairn coming as if he had nothing to do with it? Where does he think you got it? In the bulrushes? You know where he is. You know where. Finish your tea. It's time of the morning. Not seven o'clock yet. What other chance does he get with you on his back? Doesn't he realise what would happen if I came out of all the absolute? Ah, he'd have to take it away with not known. You would have to find somebody else to put in the shop and push you around. What else do you think of with your shops and your money? Oh, I lad, there's a time I'd have clouded you for that. Well, get your legs back and you can come and welcome. I get me legs back. Mind if I do, it won't be you or old Billy I'll have to thank. How oh, Billy was mad keen to tell you. Oh, aye, but if it hadn't been for our Tom, would I ever have known? I mean, for Jack Ford, would you ever have known? Oh, uh, sure. Oh, all right, Bill. So it's got to be your decision. But you know, we can't manage the way you are Oh, give now. over, Bella, will you? There's a risk in most things. But I'll tell you something. I'll risk almost any bloody operation to see the back of the pain I've been in recently. Pain? What pain? You never told us about me pain. Well, you've got enough on your plate, haven't you? Anyway, I haven't made me mind up yet. There's a lot to think about before that time comes. Do you think if he had this operation, it'd improve his temper? Hey, let me do that. I'm not helpless. Remember what happened last time? Last time's different. I'm all right this time. Mr. Seaton let you off the hook? Oh, I was a way out before he was up. Well, you'll be coming round with him later on anyway, so why bother? I wanted to see you, pet. I cannot talk to you with him there. What's there to talk about? Nothing. Everything. I just wanted to know how you are. A day nearer. There's a postcard for you from Jack. From Jack? It's in the shop on the shelf by the door. Why in the world did he send it here? Ask him. Hey, it's the House of Parliament. Have you seen what he says? 
I'm buying this, so that's Jack for you. I didn't read it. You didn't read it? It wasn't sent to me, was it? Hey, listen. The streets are paved with gold here, bonnie lad. I'm picking up a few nuggets. Jack. P.S. As I'm not popular with you all at the moment, I'm sending this by Dolly. Give her my love. You see, it's to you, really. He sent it as if you lived here. He's making trouble. As if I haven't got enough. Folk coming in here, giving us the eye. Saying, oh, what a shame. Next they'll be saying the Ben's got your nose. You're imagining. What else have I got to do? Oh, you shouldn't be on your own at a time like this. I am the wanter. Stuck here on my own with your Ben that everybody thinks is Jack's. I'm still telling lies. Like I had to stand up in that court and tell lies. Do you know what that was like? Do you think I like denying the father? Oh, Kurt. Oh, Are don't we? touch his... Dolly. It's just as hard for me. I don't want you here. Not on your own, not like this. Not till it's all over, till I get the absolute. Well, that's nigh on two months off. Do you think I don't know that? I'm counting the days. You're me wife. Not yet. As good as what's a bit writing. It's everything. You're not understand, man. You not understand anything. I don't want to see you till it's over. Did you ever do that, ma'am? Clout you? You've got long ears. Did he? Ah, it's just his talk. Don't say it didn't come near it once or twice. I had a wicked tongue. Hard? And a heel of me hand I can still use. Billy, if you could just fall in with his way. About setting up like a proper doctor. If it's not harping on the point, I do happen to have a bit of parchment that proves I'm a proper doctor. Proper doctors gets paid. Look at what the Duke of Bedlington's doctor charged just for seeing him. Wait, me dad hears what the surgeon wants for the operation. Oh, that doesn't bother him. What he's worried about is what might happen without a breadwinner in the family. Now, if you give up the idea of that clinic... Ma'am, it appears to have given me up, and I can find somewhere rent-free. If he could just see you settled, I'm on the way to it. Where is he? Your father's in the shop. Oh, we can wait. Sit down and eat. I don't want anything. You went out without even a cup of tea inside. Now sit down. Seen Dolly? Aye. She shouldn't be on her own. Oh, Mum, she's, she's going out of her mind. It's still six weeks to go or more. For the baby? Surely it's a lot longer than that. No, for the absolute. She doesn't want to see us. It's almost like she hates us. Rosie Mason. Huh? Rosie Mason, she's only 14, but she's a clever lass. Now, she could live with Dolly and help in the shop. I'll speak to her, ma'am. There's 12 in that family. They'll be glad to see the back of one. You were out early, Toby informs me. It was a perfect morning. Cherub needed exercising, and so did I. Jeffreys reports an offer for Maddox Square. Hooray. From the Yugoslavs. Seems they want it for a legation. Do perfectly. It's a monstrosity. We hardly ever use it. Only for coronation. Still, we've had it since 1820. It's in the worst Regency style. It would need redecorating completely. It cost a fortune. Yeah. People call the Northern League to combat Bolshevism. Do I want to combat Bolshevism? Thought you might like to run your clever eye over the place. You haven't got anything specially on hand, have you? Betty Wilton wants me to join a party to New York on the Mauritania. Very noisy, very crowded. I was there in 1912. Covered in snow. This will be summer. Very hot. Oh, I don't think I shall go anyway. What do you intend? You don't usually favour us after the county show. And that reminds me. This new underguard has no hand to the hybrid teeth. I don't think I stand an earthly against Jepson again this year. <laughs> what happened to that rather pleasant lad we had? Tom Seaton. Mm. He's helping his father with his shops. And the nice little woman? She's having a nice little divorce and a nice little baby, we all hope. <laughs> what the devil am I going to do about the Northern League? They want me to be president. One more presidency weighs so heavily. I do rather like to weigh these things carefully at the outset, even if the follow-up lacks enthusiasm. <laughs> Aren't you going to open your last letter? Hmm? Oh, yeah. A Cecil Hotel. I shall be reduced to that if we sell Maddox Square. I do wish you'd think about it. You could rope Roddy in to advise you. That'll make him happy. Oh, oh. this is from your Mr. Ford. My Mr. Ford? He's in London. Staying at the Cecil, I shall have to inform the Northern League. Well, what does he want? He asks very politely if I can give him an introduction to Alistair Fitzgerald. Alistair? Jack Ford? Well, I don't know Alistair, I knew his father. Darling, you are on the board of directors. Well, I thought they'd thrown me off. Now, why should your Mr. Ford want an introduction to a merchant bank? What then? Ted Jones, not me that one to Richie's foreman. Like that, is it? Right there. Yes? You want to 
see me, Mr. Erskine. Where the hell you been? You caused my bottleneck in my shop. I've been thinking things over. I don't think I'm getting enough time for the job I'm on. Not getting enough time? 19,000 unemployed shipyard workers and the laziest, most useless lout. Now get back on your job and come see me at half past five. Oh, I under the old system, we used to work together as a team, taking a good jobs with a bat and helping each other out like. But now with this new changeover... If you're not satisfied, lad, you know what you can do. I'm entitled to state my case. You're entitled to bugger all that till you finish your job. This is a shipyard, you know, not a bloody social club. All right, well, come on, I'm getting paid less this week and I didn't last for the same work. You cause more trouble in this shop than the rest of them put together. Now pack your tools. I'd be glad to see the back of you. I think you ought to know, Mr. Erskine. I'm acting under the shop steward's advice. So that's it, is it? I might have known a useless bugger like you couldn't stand on your own two feet. Don't you know you're supposed to see me before speaking to the shop steward? Where is he, anyway? Where's Regan? Right behind you, boy -o. I saw Jonesy coming in here. What's up? Don't you, boy or me. I have enough trouble from the locals without complaints blown up by shop stewards from the Irish Free State. What's it all about, anyway? I'll explain it to you simply. So as even a foreman can understand. Will you be late? Depends. I might have to bring them back here tonight. Here? Jones and Regan? Mm. It's a pity Regan's the shop steward involved. Red car marks front to back. Talks like the tide coming in. Jack could fiddle. It's a pity Jack isn't here to hold your hand over this. As for Jones, clock's in late. It starts clearing up a quarter of an hour before time. Why do our industrial martyrs always have feet of clay? You, from London. Oh, talk of the devil, Jack. Aren't you going to read it? Oh, I'll look at it in the office. Read it quick. Maybe it'll teach you how to lead the revolution. There's no time, Pet. Regan, sit and wait in the office for us. It's the old trouble and the old junior lesson that every job should pay for itself. A good job shouldn't carry the bad. We've learned that time after time. You had never said it through a word, brother. Well, what are we going to do about it? The agreement was that we should work the new race for one month. It was agreed by the shop steward's committee. Oh, some of the peace rates won't wait a month without causing grave unrest. And are you given to the fair trial you agreed on? We agreed to operate the new bonuses for a month, subject to review. It was not stipulated the reviewing should wait a month. Well, what else does it mean, then? If you don't wait a month before asking for a review, you haven't given the scheme a month's try, have you? If we ask for a review at the end of a month, we'll get a date for discussion a month after that. The manners will want a month to think it over. So we'll work these bonuses three months, saving the bosses money, with no guarantee of an alteration. What exactly are you asking for? Jobs repriced now, lost pay made up, and Jones given his job back. Is Jones a member of the shop committee? He's a secretary. All laid on her. You're not suggesting this has been engineered, Brother Headley? You're ahead of me the whole time, Brother Regan. We've well, tightened up the organization, of course. With some of these knock you down and stamp on your face farms, you need it. Jack Ford knew that. Well, I've got to go. If I'm late for the afternoon shift, they'll find me. He's gone without his tea to come on back. Well, there it is anyway. Don't you forget it. Might as well be invisible. Lacey Street next. Wait, hey, we did Lacey Street yesterday. Well, lad, that was the day I got talked to that stamp business. Cross over there, you can cut up the bank. You know, all it's done is cost us so far. Got out a penny piece back. Look, man, I said cross over there. What the hell are you up to? You need some air, Doc. I'll tell you when I need some air. Look, what the hell are you up to? Stop, lad. Stop, you daft clot. Look, what's the matter with you? You've come to enough cash for one day. What the hell's up with you? I want to show you where I work. You work for me. You come on with us. You want to shove this thing home yourself? Boy, it's a long haul, that. And I'll break your bloody arm, boy. You don't think I can't do it? I'd like to see you try it. I know what's up with you. I'm just seen your lass still pawing the ground. Now we sit back easy. If you're going to be an invalid, you might as well behave like a one. Well, give me a stick, then, will you? How are you? The bloody worms is turning, all right. What for? Eh? What are you crossing us for? Trust your mother. I know Billy, I know you. Well, maybe it's been fed up to the back teeth with you. Don't think I don't know what's up. I don't want you to have a you. Just a bit of air, door. And where the hell are you taking us anyway? You're out in the country here. There. That's where I'm taking you, door. The promised land. How are you?
Oh, you want to check it? No. Miss Lelo. All this attention will go to my head. That uh, brother of yours works for Ryder's Steampost. I've got three, they all do. The youngest? Oh, that's our Len, the clever one, he's in accounts. Is he still hot for union recognition for the office now? Old man Ryder won't have it. He said it's all right Can for the Can you shop. get Len round to see us here tonight? Oh, I don't know, he's caught me. Well, he could give up an hour's cunning for the course, couldn't he? Look at all them titties. Majestic potatoes. Yeah, there we are, sell gobstoppers bigger than them. Oh, but these don't change colour when you suck them. Look, I used to grow titties the size of your head. Yeah, we. Afternoon, Mr. Preswick. How are they coming? Oh, you're not bad. A bit small, like. This is off two plants. Ah, it's the dry weather. Uh-huh. I don't see you here in the day. Oh, when we do, I fancy that breath of air. It doesn't get about much. This is Mr. Preswick, our cauliflower king. I do. Glad to meet you, Mr. Seaton. That's one good thing that's come out of the war. How's that? Why, all this, growing for Britain. Do you remember the posters? Uh, it's all right if you've got a mind to it, I suppose. Well, your lad has. He ought to be a farmer with those hands. See, you can tell the way the soil works for him. You spent all your time here? I am retired now, 46 years with the same firm. I have a foreman at Riders. Aye, uh, I was in the pits. Aye, oh, yeah, I thought that. It's all right if you've got a family to feed, I suppose. I have no family. I'm a widower with no children. What do you do with all the stuff you grow, then? Can't eat it. I give it away at the charities, then I do a bit for the church, you see. You don't sell it? There's no need to sell. I've got my pension. You like him? And the other lad, the little workhouse doctor. They both think they can give it away. There's nobody gives them out, except me. A doctor in the family? Would that be Dr. Billy Seaton? Aye. You know him? I've heard people speak of him. That place he runs free at Wellesley Street. He's lost that. They've closed it down. Closed it? Who closed it? By the folks that own it. They reckon they can make a few bob out of it. What a shame. Has he found any other place? Well, he's looking, but they don't grow on trees rent-free. He had to find somewhere else. He did a good job at that place. Aye, well, now he can start doing some good for his cell, for his family. That's no way of thinking about it, Mr. Seaton. Your son's a real Christian. Christian, is he? Certainly go through the eye of a needle. Look, and if you're finished grubbing about for now, you better go on some work. How are you? What enough fresh air for the day. Bye. There's one thing about having an allotment. You made all sorts. Eh, uh, Mr. Prestwick? Aye. ta ra ta -ra, then. Now, what was all the worrying about? There wasn't any worrying. You had our Tom frightened out of his wits. Mm, I hide him out. Told him not to come here on his own. It's stupid, people looking, gossiping. I don't know they do that all that much. That's not all of it, is it? You are still fond of him, aren't you? That's why he has to stay away. He's concerned about you, that's all. It's only natural. You're the only thing in his life. Well, now you can tell him to stop worrying, can't you? Certainly. Everything's perfectly normal. Better than normal. Better than? You've got a fine kitten baby there, Dolly. How to start living? It'll still be when you said. No, he's mine not. It won't be early. <laughs> These things don't run by clockwork. It mustn't be, you know why? You mean the decree absolute? All that delay has brought it up close. It's got to be Tom's baby. Well, there's nothing going out of that. I had to tell them in the court it was Jack's. If it comes before the absolute, I'd have to stick to that. I'd have to write the name down as Jack's or they'd stop the divorce. It's only the registration. It's just a bit of paper. It's everything. It's got to be Tom's baby. It's got to be. I don't know, Mr. Headley. It's nothing against Ryder's Len. But why can't he go to old man Ryder himself? Look, you wouldn't call old Ryder Union mind, would you? Not likely. He's all right. I know. Treats you all as part of the family. Gives bonuses at Christmas and then cries poor for the rest of the year. It stands to reason doesn't want the union known too much. That's where we're weak. We've got the brute strength, but they've got the facts that can always get the better of us. Why do you want an up-to-date list of his freehold properties? Because it's got a value, and it's been concealed. There may be warehouses worth thousands. The firm pretends they're worth far less. That's worth our known. Union research. It's happening all over Britain. Normal thing. Have some more coke. Oh, uh, no, Tar. You can get a list, can't you? Ah, there's one in the office. There's a board meeting coming up soon, and they might ask for it. Take a copy. Uh, give it to your sister. You don't have to come to the district office. Well, you want to get back to see your lass? <laughs> Aye. Well, uh, thanks for the quote, then, Mrs. Oh, you're welcome, Len. You can let us have it the uh, day after tomorrow. Aye, well, uh, I suppose so. The union won't forget you, brother. Well, good night, then. Oh, uh, good night, Mrs. Good night, Len. Don't trip over yourself. Good night, bonnie lad. That was all my eye. Union research. It's all in the same cause. Jack's cause. I showed you the letter. 
That was all my eye and all. It's a long time since Jack was interested in the union. He's got in with a party in London. He wants this made a special development area. He needs facts. It means jobs and that's all I care about. Sometimes I get the feeling. Never mind he's in London and out the way. Jack Ford's pulling strings on you all and making you all dance to his jig. Come in, Joe. Sit yourself down. I don't want to take your time, Mr. Ryder. I don't weigh my own. See nearly enough of you. Ah, you're thinner, but you're looking canny. You better tell me how to lose a bit of weight. Uh, <laughs> yes. It's the uh, shareholder of this one for the board meeting, Mr. Ryder, and the agenda, balance sheet, and profit and loss. I will jump on the table. Do you know Joe Prestwick, foreman in the tool room, 46 years with the company? How do you do, Mr. Prestwick? Len Lidler, aren't you? Aye, that's right. Hey, I knew you'd die. You see that gold, Hunter? You stay that long and you'll have one. All right, lad, off you go. Sit down, Joe. Sit down. <coughs> now, how's your, how's your chest? Well, I've had a bit of a cough, but I'm getting out of it. Oh, well, we need to look after ourselves at our age, but... When I retire, I doubt if I'll be able to dig an allotment. When will you retire, Mr. Ryder? Oh, when the building falls on me. <laughs> Aye. Now, Joe, what can I do for you? Well, it's about Talbot Street Warehouse, Mr. Ryder. You know the one that's been standing empty? Aye, we've been looking for a let for that. Well, I've got somebody who could be a user. Aye, and who would that be? He's a doctor and he needs a place for seeing people. In a warehouse? Well, the last place he had looked like a pigsty. <laughs> Is he a doctor or a vet? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's Dr. Seaton. He, he runs a free clinic. Free? Aye. What sort of rent can he pay? Oh, he cannot pay a rent, Mr. Ryder. That's why he cannot find a place since he lost the last one. Well, that's a valuable property. I can't let that go rent-free, Joe. I mean, how would he use it? There's nothing in there but bare boards, shall we? I thought maybe you'd put up some wood screening for him. What, at my expense? Away. Hello, I'll go. Am I early? Oh, come in, Charlie. I shan't be a minute. You know Joe Presswick, do you? Of course, I've done his farewell. Joe? Hello, mister. Charles, it's good to see you. I will sit down and read something while I finish with Joe. Now, Joe, this doctor of yours, why can't he pay rent like a good Christian? He's that, Mr. Ryder. He gives his own services free. Well, somebody's got to pay something for his clinic. I mean, who pays for the medicines and such? Well, he had Father Courtney, and he gets some help from the church charity. Catholics. I'm giving out to the Pope. Oh, no, he was Anglican. <laughs> C of E, like you and me. I'm not C of E, I'm chapel. Still, so long as it's not Rome... I'll tell you what, Joe. You send this doctor... What's his name? Seaton. Well, you send him to see me. If I like his look, well, we'll see. Thanks very much. Well, goodbye, Mr. Charles. And the wood screen wouldn't come to too much, Mr. Ryder. You've got prime pasteboard in the Essex Road stores. Now, I didn't say I'd do more than the warehouse, and it's maybe at that. All right, Joe. Thanks. Nice to have seen you now. Come again. Aye. Aye. Ta-da. Ta-da. Bye. <laughs> We're a charity now. I have often thought of us like that, Uncle. I know. You've only had two launches this year, so ratio, but you've still paid a good dividend. This firm survives the way the Germans are surviving. By lower wages, longer hours, widespread peace rates, and no redundant labour in the yard. Otherwise, we'd go bankrupt like everybody else on the river. My opinion is that you should hold up more changes involving further redundancies until they've swallowed these new bonuses. That's your opinion. Here's mine. That man Jones who's been sacked is no good. Workmen are supposed to stand for fair play, but do they protest when they see others not doing a fair day's work? The diseases of management, Headley, are ulcers, thrombosis and blood pressure. If I'm risking those, no shop stewards dictating to me when I fire a slacker. I realise... No, you don't. It's a long time since you left here. If you were back, you'd know that half of these men are idle and some of the rest are agitators. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a board meeting. It must be consolation to have your opinion of human nature. What's that mean? You need never be disappointed. Look, Headley, there's a slump now. Next year, maybe there'll be a boom. Maybe the year after. Whenever it is, I'll still be here. If you want to strengthen union organisation, try elsewhere. Some nice old-fashioned patriarchy where management, vigour and sales growth take second place to the welfare of the workers. I shall raise it under any other business. What are our shares today? Forty shillings and sixpence. Well, if you bought it 31, will you grumble at? that they're not quoted around their real asset value, which must be 80 at least. Are you thinking of selling? No, but I'm thinking it's time we had a revaluation. With our shares at 40 shillings, at the real value, 80 shillings, we're very vulnerable. And surely it's time we pushed up the dividend. 51% family held and they're happy the way things are. Some of the family are getting remote. Look, Uncle, investments, 320,000. That's a crude profit standing idle. It isn't idle, it's getting a good dividend from short-term gilts. But they could be realised and the money distributed or put into a new plant where it could earn profits of 10, 20%. It will be when we need to. 
We're old-fashioned enough to see we have money in the bank before we spend it. This company's never had to go begging to the banks for capital. It's the banks who could have their eyes on us. Do you realise at present share prices, someone could pick up the whole of Riders for half of what it's worth? And lap of our 300,000 for dessert. What's all this leading to? You've got to take some action as a matter of urgency and raise the dividend, at least double it. And you're proposing to move this today? Yes. Well, you can try. If you see Milburn, tell him I want to see him when it turns yes, out. Hello, Daddy. I just had the most extraordinary call from that fellow Manners. Ah, oh, Horry, what did he want? A matter of business he wants to discuss. What business am I with Manners? Perhaps it's about the Northern League. Did you suggest him as president? I wouldn't suggest him as president of a whippet race. <laughs> See, you got some mail too. Yes, from Roddy. He has taken up racing. Racing or stable boys? Now, let's keep our family skeletons in the cupboard. He's arranging a party for Goodwood. Everybody dressing up. Dread to think as what? Hmm. He wants me to go up. Will you? Well, it might be amusing. I could look at Maddox Square for you. Ah. We might even hold the party there. Oh. I must go and organise the packing. You mean you're leaving at once? Tomorrow. Yes, your mother was always packing to be off somewhere. I expect that's why these days I scarcely move. You could come too. I don't think you want me to, do you? Caro, about that party. Won't be in pyjamas or anything, will you? Do try and keep the police out of it. Read all about it in the Tatler. We'll do it for a keep and half a crown a week. Mind, that'll go on our dad's beer money, but that's not our worry. I think you should have told Dolly, ma'am. She might say no. Didn't want to give her the chance. She won't when I push Rosie in front of her. Aye, and we's going to pay this, lass. The girl I hired was a manager for the shop. I'm not paying assistance. Two and sixpence. I'll pay it. And her keep it. Aye, well, you're a rich man round here. Hey, ma'am. I give this to Dolly. She can put it in the window at the back where it'll get some sun. Nice. Well, ma'am, I've got some more. I'm just off the dummies. I left some in the oven for you. Dad? It's in the oven. It's in Joe Festwick. He's made an appointment for us to see Mr. Ryder. Everything goes as he says. I could get a start in a couple of weeks. Talbot Street. It's not like Wellesley Street. Mm. I haven't forgotten that all your money, you know. Mm. What's up? What well, should be up? Not about. Look, it's not to do with you. Just get on with your supper. One of them bridges that goes up and down. Oh, there's money in the shop. I have to keep it on a chain. Ah, well, don't bother locking up, Pet. I'm not stopping. I brought this for you. From Tom. Uh huh. He said put it on the windowsill, catch the light. Oh, Tom's good with pot plants. He should have his own nursery. He'll have one of a different sort soon. Oh, I see you're getting ready. Plenty of time. I've no else to do once I've shut the shop up. No, well, you're on your own too much. You should have somebody to talk to. Stop your mind running the same way. I haven't much choice about that, have I, ma'am? That's what I've come about. Now, just you stop there. That's right. This way. This is Rosie Mason. She's come to live with you. You do anything he tells you, don't you? Well, I told you what it was for. Well, Jack said it was for. Got a stump there? No. I'll go over to the pub and get one there. <coughs> You just haven't learned yet, have you? Jack's only out for himself, number one, all the time, and you go along. I've got reason to. With everything he does? Why do you think he put you in the district secretary job? He didn't put me in. The men did. They voted. I don't trust him. And there's the difference between us. Suppose he got you in a mess and you lost your job. What could you do then? What could don't you do? Don't go on like that, lass. I'm your own man. 
Not Jack's. Not even yours. Not when it comes to deciding what's right and what's wrong to do. That's wrong. That list of stores and warehouses. I know the way you had to go about it. You don't believe what Jack told you. You know it's all lies. It won't be long. Matt, don't post the letter. Do you like babies? Oh, aye. She had plenty of practice, all them brothers and sisters. Can you do sums? Give change. You might have to be behind the counter. Well, I can do me 12 times. And I got that call for me dad's beer money. You've got an awful lot of hair. Oh, aye, she's a right little film star. You might find a few nits. They'll come out. Me mam says nits are a sign of strength. Not in here, they aren't. Oh, all right. I'll take you on, Rosie. We'll have a bed of me own. Well, you're not sleeping with me. Ah, you'll have your own bed, but we'll make sure you get a good wash first with carbolic. Come and give me a hand with this bath. I need your bundle there. Eh? Won't have a look through it. Pull that bath out. I've got water heating. I was going to use it for myself. Our mum says she'll do it for a keep and half a crown a week. We'll not have a whole family round asking for tick. Oh, they'll not get in your road. Leave them to me. I'll be away then. Now, you'll be a good girl, Rosie. Do as Mrs Ford tells you. Aye. Now pour that water in. Give Tommy Lou. Ah, I will. Hello. Good night. No, no, you both. I will. Right. Get your clothes off. What? Come on, it's a warm night. You'll not freeze. How long is it since you had a wash all over? I was in the sea twice this summer. Oh, dear me. How are you? Mind? You're a big girl for 14, aren't you? A lot of any lads coming round after you. You haven't got a lad. You better not have neither. Come on, get your stockings off. You don't have to be shy with me. Doing plodging in clots. I'll need a blow lamp to get that lot off. Looks awful hot. Of course it's hot. It's got to be hot. I'm going to need two boilings, I think. Now, come on. Well, what's the matter now? Do you have to watch us? I won't be able to see you, you know. All I'll see is what's been clinging for weeks. Now, come on. The next time you look in the mirror, you're going to get a big shock. What are you doing for? Do what? Come off it, lad. A young doctor can make good money in this town. There's plenty of well-off folk. There's plenty of poor folk as well, you know, who can't afford good doctors. I'm not a saint. I'm glad to hear it. I don't trust them. Are you a good chapel goer? I have been. Ever let you have Talbot Street? It'll need doing up. Have you seen it? Not yet. Well, there's nothing there but bare floors. I mean, we need cubicles. And I don't know what else. Oh, plenty well in hands. Well, you'll need more than that. Take a look at it. Let me know what you want. I'll see what can be done. Have I got it then? What have we been talking about? Well. Can I ask you why you're doing this, Mr. Ryder? This company was founded by my great grandfather in 1810. We made a penny or two out of it. Look out of them windows, the chimneys, the grits. Some of that did his bit for. Joe Prestwick's chest, and those of your patients, I dare say. My directors tell me that I've too much money in the bank, I ought to put up the dividend. Your free clinic strikes me as a better way to use the guilt. What do your shareholders say, Mr. Ryder? Well, I bloody well tell them. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, have a look at the place. I will. Thanks. Uh, <clears throat> yes, yes, put him on. Yes, Charlie. Yes, I've seen it. Up sixpence, 41. Who's been selling? What's more to the point? Who's been buying? Well, see if they can find out and get back to me. I want to know who's behind this. Sir Horatio, your grace. Ah, Duke. Manners, come along in and sit down. See if you can find some whiskey for Sir Horatio, Toby, will you? Or sherry? Uh, whiskey, thank you. Neat. How's Lady Caroline? She's gone up to London. Left me to lick my wounds. I've been beaten by the postman again. 
I didn't know you were in competition with the Royal Mail. The county show. Took first prize for roses, left me to scrape a third. Now, how is that, Manners? Here's a man, you call him a poor man, earning perhaps three pounds a week. The cottage garden the size of a billiard table. Here am I with 7,000 acres, six gardeners, greenhouses, time and expertise. He scoops the prize every year. What sort of social justice do you call that? I'd sack my gardeners. Oh, well, of course, you would. Thank you, Toby. I'll do this. You care. I have a different contract with society. I won't join you. How to live You spoke of a small matter of business. Oh, truly small. In fact, it's more of a personal whim than anything else. <laughs> Heard of Riders? No. Nope. Riders Sons and Company Limited, Geller Shield. Manufacturers of steam pumps. Very old established firm. Well, I think I've heard of them. You should, Duke. You own shares in them. I do? I imagine your bankers acquired them when they first went public. There aren't many of them around. Was it a good investment? Mm, quite good. They were suited five shillings, and now 41. The firm did very well in the war. Uh, some people did. It's all right, Duke. As they say, he made a fortune, lost a son. It's a cruel saying. Oddly enough, it's the reason I'm here. I built up a small trust for Reggie, parcels of this and that. I thought of making it into a charitable trust, shares in companies in this locality, the northeast. You see, um, I've faith in it. Things are bad now, but when we get labour out and yes, buy yes, confidence... Yes, yes. You ever heard of the Northern League? I have been approached. As I say, it's a more of a personal whim. I, um, I like to buy your rider shares. Let me refill your glass. Uh, no, thank you. I don't know when I've still got them. Oh, you have. 50,000 of them. Not that it's a great inducement, but I could offer the odd point above the price. I see you value your whims. I'd have to speak to my bankers. Fitzgeralds, aren't they? I have to let you know. In the next few days? Possibly. Or going? Uh, yes, I must. I hope Lady Caroline's enjoying London, out of season. Yeah, she's looking over our townhouse with a view to refurbishment. Dreadful relic which we ought to sell, but like you, personal whim. <laughs> so Horatio's leaving, Toby. I'll hope to hear them. By all means. Incidentally, how do you know I own these shares? I thought there was an element of confidentiality in these matters. There are ways and means, Duke. If you'll excuse me. Hmm. Yes. Yes, Charlie. What do you mean, nominees? I don't like the sound of that. Who are they? Yes? Yes? Well, you keep your ear to the ground. I think you're right. Somebody's getting up to something. What do you think of that? About it. reason, you see. Once we get started, I can't find a room somewhere and just see private patients. Ah, you've got your strength back for one job yet, then all two. No, I'm, I'm strong as a horse. I've been having a rest cure. Oh, well, you'll please yourself whatever I say. Plenty of doctors do free hospital clinics, you know. I mean, it comes to the same thing. Boy, I wish old Stoker could have seen Talbot Street. He'd have thought he was in a palace. That uh, doctor. The Duke's the one I saw. What's he called? Sir James Boynton, now, eh? He does a clinic at the Durham Free. What sort of notice would he need for me? Well, uh, he wouldn't do the operation. I mean, that would be up to the surgeon, Mr. Marshall. I'd certainly find out well, for you, I though. haven't said I'm going to have it. Just want to know how things stand. What sort of time I'd have. Get things straight. Right, this morning. is strictly between you and me. Good Lord. <clears throat> Extraordinary. Here are the Greeks bearing gifts, Toby. Your Grace. The Horatio. Yes, Your Grace. He offered me a premium on my rider shares when they stood at 41. Today I see they've gone up to 48. What does your excellent financial brain make of that? I'm inclined to think Sir Horatio was trying to do you, Your Grace, if you'll excuse the expression. I oh, believe you've hit the nail on the head, Toby. What do you think's been happening? A movement in the market, Your Grace? Yeah. What you got there? I brought you the tatler, Your Grace. I don't want it. It was ordered specially for Lady Caroline. Give it to Cook. I think you might be interested, Your Grace. A photograph huh? on page 327. I've marked the place. Ah. Good one. The photograph is at the bottom of the page. Lady Caroline Summers, daughter of the Duke of Bedlington, Honourable Alistair Fitzgerald, merchant banker and friend, 
assessing form in the paddock. And friend, Jack Ford. Dance to the daddy, sing to the mummy, dance to the daddy, to the mummy, sing. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy, thou shalt have the fishy when the wood comes in. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy, thou shalt have the haddock when the wood comes in. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy, thou shalt have the blood when the wood comes in. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy, thou shalt have the mackerel when the wood comes in. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy, thou shalt have the salmon when the wood comes in. It's the welfare of the workers. I shall raise it under any other business. What are our shares today? Forty shillings and sixpence. Well, if you bought it thirty-one, will you come to that? That they're not quoted around their real asset value, which must be eighty at least. You think it is selling? No. But I'm thinking it's time we had a revaluation. With our shares at forty shillings and the real value eighty shillings, we're very vulnerable. And surely it's time we pushed up the dividend. Fifty-one percent family held, and they're happy the way things are. Some of the family are getting remote. Look, Uncle. Investments three hundred and twenty thousand. That's a crude profit standing idle. It isn't idle. It's getting a good dividend from short-term gilts. But they could be realised and the money distributed or put into new plant where it could earn profits of 10, 20 percent. It will be when we need to. We're old-fashioned enough to see we have money in the bank before we spend it. This company's never had to go begging to the banks for capital. It's the banks who could have their eyes on us. Do you realise at present share prices someone could pick up the whole of Riders for half of what it's worth and lap up our 300,000 for dessert? What's all this leading to? You've got to take some action as a matter of urgency and raise the dividend. At least double it. And you're proposing to move this today? Yes. Well, you can try. Well rid of bad rubbish. What sort of a man is it that would leave a lass with a bairn coming as if he had no to do with it? Where does he think you got it? In the bulrushes? You know where he is. You know where. Finish your tea. It's time of the morning. Not seven o'clock yet. What other chance does he get with you on his back? Doesn't he realise what would happen if out came out of all the absolute? Ah, he'd have to take her away without not knowing. You'd have to find somebody else to put in the shop and push you around. What else do you think of but your shops and your money? Oh, I lad, there's a time out of clothing you for that. Well, get your legs back and you can come welcome. I get me legs back. Mind if I do it, won't be you or old Billy I'll have to thank. Our Billy was mad keen to tell you. Oh, aye, but if it hadn't been for our Tom, would I ever have known? I mean for Jack Ford, would you ever have known? Oh, I should. Oh, all right, Bill. So it's got to be your decision. But you know, we can't manage the way you are Oh, give now. over, Bella, will you? There's a risk in most things. But I'll tell you something. I risk almost any bloody operation to see the back of the pain I've been in recently. Pain? What pain? You never told us about me pain. Well, you've got enough on your plate, haven't you? Anyway, I haven't made me mind up yet. There's a lot to think about before that time comes. Do you think if we had this operation? Comes in, dance to the daddy, sing to the mummy, dance to the daddy, to the mummy, sing. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy, thou shalt have the fishy when the wood comes in. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy, thou shalt have the fishy when the wood comes in. Caroline, hope it keeps like this for the show. Oh, I can only go down on one's knees and pray. Wish I save you delivering those. Thanks. There's not much. No parcels. And uh, how's his grace? I'm in fine form. Hoping to take the Bedlington Rose Prize this year. Why, well, he doesn't stand a chance. You can tell him. Except maybe for his walls of simple florins, they're not bad. You might get an honourable mention. That's most encouraging of you. I'll tell him. Good morning, Lady Caroline. I'll go over to the pub and get one there. You just haven't learned yet, have you? Jack's only out for himself, number one, all the time, and you go along. I've got reason to. With everything he does? Why do you think he put you in the district secretary job? He didn't put me in. The men did. They voted. I don't trust him. And there's the difference between us. 
Suppose he got you in a mess and you lost your job. What could you do then? What could Don't you do? Don't go on like that, lass. I'm your own man. Not Jack's. Not even yours. Not when it comes to deciding what's right and what's wrong to do. That's wrong. That list of stores and warehouses. I know the way you had to go about it. You don't believe what Jack told you. You know it's all lies. It won't be long. Matt, don't post the letter. Do you like babies? Oh, aye. She had plenty of practice, all them brothers and sisters. Can you do sums? Give change. You might have to be behind the counter. Well, I can do me 12 times, and I got that call for me dad's beer money. You've got an awful lot of hay. Oh, aye, she's a right little film star. You might find a few nits, they'll come out. Me mam says nits are a sign of strength. Not in here, they aren't. Oh, all right. I'll take you on, Rosie. We'll have a bit of me own. Oh, you're not the door. Why in the world did he send it here? Ask him. Hey, it's the house of the apartment. Have you seen what he says? I'm buying this, so that's Jack for you. I didn't read it. You didn't read it? It wasn't sent to me, was it? Hey, listen. The streets are paved with gold here, bonnie lad. I'm picking up a few nuggets. Jack. P.S. As I'm not popular with you all at the moment, I'm sending this by Dolly. Give her my love. You see, it's to you, really. He's sent it as if you lived here. He's making trouble. As if I haven't got enough. Folk coming in here, giving us the eye. Saying, oh, what a shame. Next to be saying the Ben's got your nose. You're imagining. What else have I got to do? Oh, you shouldn't be on your own at a time like this. I am, though, aren't I? Stuck here on my own with your Ben that everybody thinks is Jack's. I'm still telling lies. Like I had to stand up in that court and tell lies. Do you know what that was like? Do you think I like denying the father? Oh, Dad. Oh, don't touch his... Dolly. It's just as hard for me. I don't want you here. Not on your own, not like this. Not till it's all over, till I get the absolute. Well, that's nigh on two months off. Do you think I don't know that? I'm counting the days. You're me wife. Not yet. As good as what's a bit writing. It's everything. What then? Ted Jones. It's not me, that one from it. He's foreman. Like that, is it? Right there. Yes? You want to see me, Mr. Erskine? Where the hell you been? You caused my bottleneck in my shop. I've been thinking things over. I don't think I'm getting enough time for the job I'm on. Not getting enough time? 19,000 unemployed shipyard workers and the laziest, most useless lout. Now get back on your job and come and see me at half past five. Oh, I under the old system, we used to work together as a team, taking a good jobs with a bat and helping each other out like. But now with this new changeover... You're not satisfied, lad. You know what you can do. I'm entitled to state my case. You're entitled to bugger all that till you finish your job. This is a shipyard, you know, not a bloody social club. All right, well, come on, I'm getting paid less this week and I didn't last for the same work. You caused more trouble in this shop than the direction put together. Now pack your tools. I'd be glad to see the back of you. I think you ought to know, Mr. Erskine. I'm acting under the shop steward's advice. So that's it, is it? I might have known a useless bugger like you couldn't stand on your own two feet. Don't you know you're supposed to see me before speaking to the... He wants to get started. I can't find a room somewhere and just see private patients. Ah, you haven't got your strength back for one job yet, then long too. No, I'm, I'm strong as a horse. I've been having a rest cure. Ah, oh, well, you'll please yourself, whatever I say. Plenty of doctors do free hospital clinics, you know. I mean, it comes to the same thing. Boy, I wish old Stoughton could have seen Talbot Street. He'd have thought he was in a palace. That the doctor? The Duke's the one I saw. What's he called? Sir James Boynton, now, he does a clinic at the Durham Free. What sort of notice what he need for me? Well, uh, he wouldn't do the operation. I mean, that would be up to the surgeon, Mr. Marshall. I'd certainly find out well, for you, I though. haven't said I'm going to have it. Just want to know how things stand. What sort of time I'd have. To get things straight. Mind, this morning. is strictly between you and me. Good Lord. Do you, really? He's sent it as if you lived here. He's making trouble. As if I haven't got enough. Folk coming in here, giving us the eye. Saying, oh, what a shame. Next to be saying the Ben's got your nose. You're imagining. What else have I got to do? Well, you shouldn't be on your own at a time like this. I am, though, aren't I? 
Stuck here on my own with your Ben that everybody thinks is Jack's. I'm still telling lies. Like I had to stand up in that court and tell lies. Do you know what that was like? Do you think I like denying the father? Oh, Pet. Oh, don't touch his... Dolly. It's just as hard for me. I don't want you here. Not on your own, not like this. Not till it's all over, till I get the absolute. Well, that's nigh on two months off. Do you think I don't know that? I'm counting the days. You're me wife. Not yet. As good as what's a bit right. It's everything. You're not understand, man. You not understand anything. I don't want to see you till it's over. Did you ever do that, ma'am? Clout you? You've got long ears. Did he? Ah, it's just his talk. Don't say it didn't come near it once or twice. I had a wicked tongue. Hard. And a heel of me hand I can still use. Billy, if you could just fall in with his way. About setting up like a proper doctor. If it's not harping on the point, I'd... As good as what's a bit right. It's everything. You're not understand, man. You're not understand anything. I don't want to see you till it's over. Did you ever do that, ma'am? Clout you. You've got long ears. Did he? Ah, it's just his talk. Don't say it didn't come near it once or twice. I had a wicked tongue. Hard. And a heel of me hand I can still use. Billy, if you could just fall in with his way. About setting up like a proper doctor. If it's not harping on the point, I do happen to have a bit of parchment that proves I'm a proper doctor. Proper doctors gets paid. Look at what the Duke of Bedlington's doctor charged just for seeing him. Wait, me dad hears what the surgeon wants for the operation. Oh, that doesn't bother him. What he's worried about is what might happen without a breadwinner in the family. Now, if you give up the idea of that clinic... Ma'am, it appears to have given me up, and that's something to find somewhere rent-free. If he could just see you settled or on the way to it. Where is he? Your father's in the shop. Oh, we can wait. Sit down and eat. I don't want anything. You went out without even a cup of tea inside. You now sit down. Seen Dolly? Aye. Oh, she shouldn't be on her own. Oh, Ma'am, she's, she's going out of her mind. It's still six weeks to go or more. Baby, surely it's a lot longer than that. No, for the absolute. This is from your Mr. Ford. My Mr. Ford? He's in London. Staying at the Cecil. I shall have to inform the Northern League. Well, what does he want? He asks very politely if I can give him an introduction to Alistair Fitzgerald. Alistair? Jack Ford? Well, I don't know Alistair. I knew his father. Darling, you are on the board of directors. Well, I thought they'd thrown me off. Now, why should your Mr. Ford want an introduction to a merchant bank? What then? Ted George, it's not me that wants to meet his foreman. Like that, is it? Right there. Yes? You want to see me, Mr. Erskine? Where the hell you been? You caused my bottleneck in my shop. I've been thinking things over. I don't think I'm getting enough time for the job I'm on. Not getting enough time? 19,000 unemployed shipyard workers and the laziest, most useless lout. Now get back on your job and come see me at half past five. Oh, I under the old system. We used to work together as a team, taking a good jobs with a bad and helping me. You could come too. I don't think you want me to, do you? Cara, about that party. Won't be in pyjamas or anything, will you? Do try and keep the police out of it. Read all about it in the Tatler. I'll do it for a keep and half a crown a week. Mind that'll go on our dad's beer money, but that's not our worry. I think you should have told Dolly, ma'am. She might say no. Didn't want to give her the chance. She won't when I push Rosie in front of her. Aye, and where's going to pay this lass? The girl I hired was a manager for the shop. I'm not paying assistance. Two and sixpence. I'll pay it. And her keep. Aye, well, you're the rich man around here. Hey, ma'am. I give this to Dolly. She can put it in the window at the back where it'll get some sun. Nice. Well, ma'am, I'll get some more. Oh, tell us again, I'll just stop the dummies. I'll have some in the oven for you. Thanks. Come on. Dad? It's in the oven. What did you do then? What could Don't you do? Don't go on like that, lass. I'm your own man. Not Jack's. Not even yours. Not when it comes to deciding what's right and what's wrong to do. That's wrong. That list of stores and warehouses. I know the way you had to go about it. You don't believe what Jack told you. You know it's all lies. 
before me long. Matt, don't post the letter. Do you like babies? Oh, aye. She had plenty of practice, all them brothers and sisters. Can you do sums? Give change. You might have to be behind the counter. Well, I can do me 12 times, and I got that call for me dad's beer money. You've got an awful lot of hair. Oh, aye, she's a right little film star. You might find a few nits, they'll come out. Me mam says nits are a sign of strength. Not in here, they aren't. Oh, all right. I'll take you on, Rosie. We'll have a bed of me own. Well, you're not sleeping with me. Ah, you'll have your own bed, but we'll make sure you get a good wash first with carbolic. Come and give me your hand with this bath. I need your bundle there. I won't have a look through it. Pull that bath out. I've got water heating. I was going to use it for myself. My mum says she'll do it for a keep and half a crown a week. We'll not have a whole family round asking for tick. Oh, they'll not get in your road leave. Ah, get me legs back. Mind if I do it, won't be you or old Billy I'll have to thank. Our Billy was mad keen to tell you. Oh, aye, but if it hadn't been for our Tom, would I ever have known? I mean, for Jack Ford, would you ever have known? Oh, uh, sure. Oh, all right, Bill. So it's got to be your decision. But you know, we can't manage the way you are Oh, give now. over, Bella, will you? There's a risk in most things. But I'll tell you something. I risk almost any bloody operation to see the back of the pain I've been in recently. Pain? What pain? You never told us about me pain. Well, you've got enough on your plate, haven't you? Anyway, I haven't made me mind up yet. There's a lot to think about before that time comes. Do you think if he had this operation, it'd improve his temper? Hey, let me do that. I'm not helpless. Remember what happened last time? Last time's different. I'm all right this time. Mr. Seaton let you off the hook? Oh, I was a way out before he was up. Well, he'll be coming round with him later on anyway, so why bother? I wanted to see you, pet. I cannot talk to you with him there. What's there to talk about? Nothing. Everything. I just wanted to know how you are. A day nearer. There's a postcard for you from Jack. From Jack? It's in the shop on the shelf by the door. I know what's up with you. I've just seen your lass still pawing the ground. Oh, yes, sit back easy. If you're going to be an invalid, you might as well behave like a one. Well, give me a stick then, will you? I will. The bloody worms is turning all right. What for? Eh? What are you crossing this for? Where's your mother? No, Billy, I know you. Well, maybe it's fed up to the back teeth with you. Don't think I don't know what's up. I know what you're at, I'll you. Just a bit of air, though. And where the hell are you taking us anyway? You're out in the country here. There, that's where I'm taking you, though. The promised land. Come here. Do you want to check it? No. Miss Lenlock. Oh, this attention will go to my head. That uh, brother of yours works for Ryder's Steampots. I've got three, they all do. The youngest. Oh, that's our Len, the clever one, he's in accounts. Is he still hot for union recognition for the office staff? Old man Ryder won't have it. He said it's all right Can for the Can you shop. get Len round to see us here tonight? 